Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's epic episode, we will be talking about how to calculate average of best values. I know I usually use a finance example to illustrate the, the problem. In this case, I'm going to use something completely different. We'll be looking at test scores of students, but the problem is very simple. Think about the situation. For example, I'm trying to understand what was the highest temperature in Illinois. So there's several approaches for me to calculate that. I can look at, let's say my data comes in by zip codes, so I can calculate and find the maximum temperature for Illinois in a particular year. So whatever that zip code turns out to be and say this is the highest temperature. However, the problem and the risk is that I might run into an outlier. Maybe there is a bad reading of the data and for some reason I have this crazy reading at a particular zip code station that will be 120 degrees. On average, it's probably not a good proxy into understanding the highest temperature in Illinois. Another approach I might have is to say, okay, look at all the zip codes, find their highest temperatures, average those out, and that would be the average temperature for Illinois. And that's exactly the kind of problem we'll be solving. We're gonna find the best or highest values for something and then average that out so that we can use it in our analysis. So as I said, in our case, we will be looking at a test score data set. So here in this table, we have uh, our students, Jack and Tom, took a bunch of tests for two different subjects, English and math, and they did it on different dates. And so they had a bunch of chances to take a test and then we record their tests. I've added a column to the table to indicate whether that score was their best for this particular subject. So every time you see a green bubble, that means that for that student in this subject, that was the highest test. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to answer two questions. Question number one, for different subjects, what was the highest average test score? And then as a bonus, I'm going to mix things up a little bit and say, what was the highest average score for the latest test that the student or students took? So we will implement two average of best calculations. One for all tests combined per student per subject, and the other one for just the latest tests that they've taken. As usual, all of the materials for this tutorial will be available on my blog. Look for the link in the description of the video. You'll be able to go to the blog, find the downloadable link. It'll be a zip file, download, open it up, see all the data and all the calculations in that file. So now let's go through the calculation. So our average best score calculation turns out is very simple. So we're only using two functions plus a couple auxiliary functions to get the answer that we need. The first thing that we need to do is for every subject that we will be analyzing, we need to make a list of all of the students. Then for every student, we need to make, we need to find the highest score that they've ever scored for the subject. And then we're gonna average them out. So once we kind of say that to ourselves in English and see if it makes sense, we just translate it to DEX and it will work exactly the same way it sounds in English. So the first thing that we're doing is we're gonna make a list of all of the students because when we talk about average, average is actually kind of dangerous function because average usually means average over some kind of category. So in our case, we're gonna be averaging by student. So we're gonna make a list of all of the students who have taken our tests. And then we're gonna be using the add column function. And what that does, it takes the starting list of our students, and then it's gonna add additional columns to it to build out that table. So we're gonna have a first column will be student and values will give us two unique students that we have in our data set. Then we're gonna add a column, we're gonna call it max student score. And then for that column with the name max student score, we're gonna calculate the max store. So what this function will do, it will calculate max. So it's gonna go to our test scores table. And for that student, it'll find whatever the max score is. So that's all this will do. Now that we have our temporary table with students and max scores for all of those students, we're gonna average all of those scores using the average x command. So average x command takes a function as parameter number one, and then you specify which column to average, and that's the same column that we've created on the fly for our students. And just using two functions, average x and add columns, we're able to average our best of champions. Please note that we're able to build this calculation without making any changes to our initial table. So this max function, that's all we need Calculate max is all we need to do to find the max, the best score for our student. If you want to average lowest scores, you just replace max with min 
and that's all you need to do. Now let's take a look at the next function uh, or measure that calculates average best score for the latest test. So before, we just used the calculate max and we were looking at all of the tests. So if I took 25 tests, it's gonna look at all 25 results and find the highest score. Now what we wanna say is, do the same thing, but only for the latest record, latest test that I took. I'm using the same thing as I did before. In fact, I could have just calculated that other measure in here without spelling it out. And I just added one more thing. I'm saying calculate that value only for those records in my test score where the is latest is equal to one. So all I need to do is I need to add this column to my original data set and specify for every unit, for every student and subject, whether this record is the latest test or not. So let's see how I implemented that. So this is the code to implement a column on our test score data set to specify whether this record is the latest test that the student took for this subject. So how do we do it? Let's say it in English first. We need to look at the record and then find what the latest date is for the student and the subject that the test exists. And then we need to compare that date with the date on the current record. If they're the same, then this is the latest date. If they're not, this is not. So this is exactly what we're doing. We're creating two variables. The first one will store my current subject. So that's my test score tables subject. The second one will store current student. After these two lines, I know what subject I'm in on the current row and what student it is for the current row. And now I'm gonna calculate the latest test for the current student, uh, latest test date. So how do I do this? The first thing that I need to do is I'm gonna be calculating maximum date. And if I don't use calculate and filter functions, this will return the current date of the record because I'm, by me adding a new column to a table, I'm only seeing one row at a, at a time. So I need to do something with the filter to see more than one row. So I'm gonna write my filter function. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all filters from the current table. So the minute I do this, I don't see one row at a time, I see the entire table. And now I wanna shrink that table only to the current student and the current subject, which is what this does. So the minute this table ran, I'm only able to see records in my table for the same students as the current record and the same subject as the current record. And now the max will go through all of those records and find whatever the latest date is, and it'll store it in this variable. Now all I need to do is compare my current test uh, score date, so the date that's in the current row, with that maximum date. And if it's true, you could say y or n or one or, or true. So you just need to find a way that is more convenient to you to specify yes or no. In this case, I'm using one or zero. And if that's true, then this will return one. If it's not true, it'll return zero. So now I'm able to use that in my function as a filter condition. If it's latest test, one. And that's how we calculate the average best score for the latest test. Now let's do a quick test to make sure that our calculation works. So let's click, for example, for English. So for English, we see that the best scores were 99 and 93. Add them together, divide by two, we arrive at 86. Let's look at math. The two best scores for math was 87 and 89. Add them together, divide by two, we're gonna get 88. And I will let you guys test the average best score for latest test by subject. I did some testing on the side and uh, it seems like it's working. So there you go. We just learned how to use average x and add column functions. And we're able to now bridge the difference between average and best values all in a single calculation, which is pretty mind blowing. Hope you found this video both informative and interesting, and please come back soon for more. Thank you, bye.